Good evening and welcome to another powerful edition of Vantage View. I am your co-host, uh, our guest and co and host <laughs> is Dr. Velma Bowles. Well, this is a live segment yes. and you know it's customary in the African tradition that before we speak to the public that we get permission from one of our elders. Now, uh, Mama is uh, 80, she's going to be 81, and we oh, ask permission that we speak, and would you please give us permission? Yes. Okay, so now <laughs> we're on full core. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just, start, and just start like our regular discussion. I want you to know that you can reach us on Real Talk Media at YouTube, Twitter, Leroy Vallo. Instagram, uh, our channel that we on is Cox Cable 15, uh, our LUS Fiber, Channel 3, uh, Shahid Rashad, uh, and Ma Buck in the Joe Show. Do you have uh, a Facebook? Well, I have a Facebook page. It's just Velvet Bowles Facebook. Okay. Yes. All right, so the telephone number to reach us is 366-8951, 366-8951. Eight nine five one. This is a live discussion. This is our. We starting off out. This is the new year, uh, Dr. Bowles. January the uh, fourth, two thousand and twenty. I tell everybody this is my year, Sister okay. Khadija. Twenty twenty. Yeah. I like how that sounds. Um, I'm ready, and oh. I think that all good things. This is my best year yet, and okay. I hope all of my listeners are joining me with that kind of thinking because thoughts and words are powerful. Yes, it is, and I would like to say that, you know, to to my family and uh, um, my associates, friends, I just hope uh, that, you know, that we really continue to have, like, good health, yes. uh, because when your health is bad, you know, you, you really can't focus like you need to. I'm hoping that uh, family members that, that owe me some money, <laughs> uh, that they would take the time and really pay their debt. I mean, and they're paying without uh, any type of... Uh, uh, taxes, you know, so that's one thing that I would. I You're would not like. charging interest. I'm not charging interest. I'm not charging interest. You know, <laughs> just give me my, just give me my three hundred dollars. You know that you owe for quite some time. Uh, and uh, <laughs> oh, it's good that we do have humor and that we can laugh about uh, things that's in our life, things that's yes. going on in our community. Uh, we would also like to say that we all, with what else is going on in our community is what's going on out uh, in in Washington D.C. Oh. and everything. So, Dr. Bowles, let's just go oh, ahead. Oh my goodness! And I, dive into President Trump declaration of I war. I have had so many uh, messages and email. I don't know why people start shooting things to me, but they said that's the oldest trick in the book. There they are looking at impeaching the person. They're looking hard at him having held Ukraine hostage and not wanting to give them aid because he didn't tell them about Biden and his son. And when mm -hmm. everything's revving up to give him the boot, there's a war declaration. And there's a problem with that, Sister Khadija. In the Constitution, it says that only Congress can declare war. Right, only Congress. So when a president gives a chief, uh, you know, position to say go and do something and the result is the killing of a general. See that was why the news was such a big deal. Oh my it God. wasn't just that oh. they bombed this above that but they killed a general, a high ranking officer in um, the Iranian system and the question is what are you indicting him for? You know it's one thing if you have world outcry and you say war crimes but there's a scramble to say why was he the target and now that they've done it, what will be the retaliation? And there's all kinds of, so it wasn't sufficient to go and kill a general because a group of citizens entered the embassy. Now it was an American embassy that did get crashed, uh, but they didn't kill anybody. They did burn down uh, an area, a room, they set it on fire, but no one died. So if our response to that is to kill a general, then there's a lot of questions saying, where was our ambassadors? Where were the advisors? Mm -hmm. um, this is already a hot spot, and we're starting this new year with the threat of retaliation by the Iranians. 
Uh, I don't know what kind of conciliatory, if anything's possible. I know that a series of soldiers were dispatched from uh, Fort Bragg. Mm -hmm. I know that because that's North Carolina, that's home country. Yeah. And uh, they didn't want to say where they were going, but all these little leaks <laughs> kept coming that they're headed to that site because they're reinforcing the embassy. But I don't know if the embassy is going to be a secondary target. When you've done something as egregious, as offensive, and I say offense, uh, if you think about playing a sport, you know, you do things to defend yourself and you keep position. But offense means you've done something to me and they're going to come back at you. So there's a lot of discussion as to was this a breach of protocol, I should say another breach of protocol by a United States president having um, given the order, you know, he's chief, you know, commander in chief and the order should rise except in the declaration of war. And the Congress was not consulted. And from what I understand, there's a number of Congress people very concerned with this kind of loose cannon behavior. And I'm just concerned for our young people because young soldiers being sent into war yes. on the whim yes. of someone. And uh, I, I don't really think, you know, war sometimes may be very important to get justice and, mm -hmm. and balance the scales, but you shouldn't be a bully. No, you so should. And then on a whim of a lunatic, you know, <laughs> something is definitely wrong with that. I know that in um, for 9/11, you know, uh, we apparently lost 3,000, no, 300. We appa apparently 300 people were killed. Yes. Uh, and what I don't understand is the fact that you don't know who actually done the killing, the the, the bombing. You actually don't know that. But yet you arbitrarily go ahead and and just kick off a uh, kick off a wall. Now, so so the the three hundred or so people, I'm, and I'm thinking it's 300. three hundred. Three okay, thousand. The three thousand. thousand. Okay, three thousand or so people that was killed. All right, they lost their lives. We we are we have grieved for that. So why do we need to grieve some more for like the six thousand that was killed? You know, in order to do what? No, I think, Sister Khadij, they're digging. They're trying to find something of enough gravity to justify. So it's kind of like if I went into your china cabinet and broke all your dishes, and then when you came in, I suddenly remember there was an earthquake a year ago. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm trying to validate. I'm trying to justify. Um, I think when you go after high-ranking officials, such as a general and others, you should have a reason, you know, when they went after Gaddafi, I had a big question, you know, oh. Gaddafi ruled for so long and now he's a target. Um, it was just, well, I don't know enough to speak with any authority, but I can speak personally that when someone is already being accused of seeking to uh, destroy a Democratic uh, candidate by withholding aid to a nation that wouldn't that spy for him. That's right. That's then right. I have a lot of trouble trusting this person's judgment in anything. In I know anything. there's questions people say, well, can an impeached president run again? I said, well, Nixon got impeached, Clinton got impeached. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nixon was at the end of his, Clinton didn't try again, but his wife did. Uh, we're now faced with a president which has halfway been impeached because Congress has said yes, yes. Senate hasn't said, yes. but the way in which the law works, impeachment doesn't mean you leave office, and that blows me away. Right. That's like telling you, okay, you're fired, but you can stay until you're ready to go. And get paid. That's my point. And get paid. <laughs> Most people, when they get fired, get escorted and, out by the security. Right. And you leave your keys and your pass cards somewhere on your way out. But I understand that impeachment in itself is not indictment. And I, I haven't understood it, but I guess higher you are in position, the more money you have, how the rules be in. You know, everything's black and white until mm -hmm. it gets to the rich. Mm -hmm. And the United States, it's, it's not no clear virgin in this uh, episode <laughs> at all. I mean, they have started wars among wars among wars. You know, they have infiltrated countries and, and, and just uh, overturned governments. You know, so, I mean, how much more uh, all our, our, our gas do you think that we need <laughs> in order to like just, oh, let's just do away with, the, with the, an, an entire country? Well, I think you're really, you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. Uh, the changes I think that is now so visible isn't that we're doing anything new. We're unable to hide it. 
that before the That's World right. Wide Web, That's before right. what we call satellite instant information, before there were credible uh, news media outside the United States, whatever was told to the people was filtered and was fed to us. I can remember as a child, Walter Cronkite was like the Bible. You know, my dad was sitting in front yeah. of the TV and if my Walter Cronkite said it, it was what was going on in the yeah, world. my grandfather too, Walter <laughs> so, Cronkite. So <laughs> when you filter the news through an icon, then whatever you tell that icon to say is going to be believable. And I'm hoping that Walter Cronkite was uh, high integrity and unimpeachable, but that's how it was. The world was set to hear what that particular person had to say. Now, uh, when I start my day, I go through Haystack, which is a news channel, look at everything going on in the United States, and then flip to Al Jarreer, see what's going on in the world, okay. because... I don't want to have to pick up the newspaper and see a filtering of something. I want to say I listened to the interview or I followed the logic that was presented by a credible panel. Mm -hmm. And that's the world. That's not just Velva Bowles. That's, that's now the world. So if you want to hoodwink me, look at the, the young man, Edward Snowden, when he leaked information, which was in fact something the public needed to hear. They called yes. him, oh, he's, he's treason. Right. He needs to be arrested. And the young men had to run and hide. And where yes. did he hide out? Russia. Now we look at a president and they're saying what he's doing is tantamount to treason. How do you ask a foreign government to look into something having to do with our business? Mm -hmm. If you're soliciting aid from someone else and you're doing it privately, I thought that was treason. Right. I mean, <laughs> that was my understanding that if you're taking special information mm -hmm. and giving it away or soliciting it, you're no longer representing the country in its best interest because you're circumventing what we have in place to protect us. And Edward Snowden, he, he did something that was immaculate. Yes. He took files, not just files, yes. he took thousands, yes. thousands of files and leaked it out. Yes. And he wasn't leaking it out for any type of pain or, yes. or anything, he lost his life. Yes. Simply because he had to hide and yes. hide in, in uh, inhumane condition, you know, and uh, he's not a treason. And what he was doing was telling us what otherwise we wouldn't get to know. That's right. And this is the whole concept. Uh, you know, we call it the paternalistic or maternalistic. A parent mm -hmm. protects a child. If, you know, there was some horror and the child didn't have to know, you might give them a soft story. You may even hide the truth. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about a nation, you're talking about people who are voting, the people who should be making the decision with you. And if you don't give them the entire facts, they can't very well understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So America, for many, many years, have been a very paternalistic kind of uh, organization that I know what's best, you know, father knows best. And they've done it not just with the American people, but with other countries. And you know who says in your face? North Korea. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And then before I lose my frame of thought, I'll, oh, <laughs> yep, North Korea. And before I lose my frame of thought, I wanted to say, too, you look at Asada Shakur. You know, Asada Shakur, she... Uh, she was uh, held a prison. Yes. She was yes. one of the former yes. members of the Black Panther. Yes. And yes. Uh, they have a million dollar, million dollar yes. bonnie on a shot of Shakira. And the only place that she could have gone was Cuba. Yes. The only place. You know, so when you think about the United States, you know, uh, it's hypocritical uh, when they talk about uh, uh, who are our enemies. Uh, it's hypocritical when you got one of the one of the the, the biggest fluke uh, in the United States, Washington, uh, uh, y'all president. You know that go and do anything that he want to do. <laughs> who is the biggest bully of all? You know, and people act like they're afraid to yes. like tell him the truth. You know, anytime you could go ahead and say, well. I'm going to grab the woman by her private. Yes! You know, oh, and I didn't say no private. You're being nice. Well, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Uh -huh. He was as vile and vulgar as we wouldn't dare to say on TV uh, right now. But his comment was vulgar. He yes. didn't protect it. He didn't say it. Mm -hmm. And he thought it was funny. And he thought and it was funny. And the first person that was talking about, oh, the, that's locker room talk. And I'm mm. saying, you know, uh, when I grew up, <laughs> we had some standards and boundaries. And there were certain foods. My grandmother, Mom Bessie, I, I, my mother's mother, would say things like, this is grown people food, 
or this is grown people something, or she said this is a grown people conversation. Yes. And we grew up in the household knowing there were boundaries. Yes. So if I came in and Auntie was there and I hadn't seen it for a while, she would give her undivided attention, ask me about my schoolwork, oh, you've grown taller, you look like your mother, whatever those niceties were, mm -hmm. my response is, well, can I get you something to drink? You know, mm -hmm. we have water, we have lemonade. And after that, I excused myself because the conversation between my mother and her sister wasn't for me. Correct. And today, oh. young people come in and they dispute what the parent is saying, they jump in, they give details, they wanna know what you just said, what's going on, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm seeing, the whole dynamic, that yes. we have lost our boundaries. Yes. And if you've ever had a child that we call spoiled in our culture, uh, that just acts out and just demands and uh, expect to get full attention, mm -hmm. and you don't chastise the child, correct the child, redirect, then you have a bully. Because when they become an adult, no is not acceptable. Yes, that's right. If you tell me I cannot, that means I'm gonna act out. Mm -hmm. It means I'm gonna pout. Or if I can, if I have enough power, I'm gonna sabotage. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see is a very indulged person who now is in a position of power, and because there's never been boundaries in his life, uh, who are you to say? I mean, he make fun of Pelusa, who is a you know speaker of the house, trying yes. to denigrate. Yes. He made fun of Maxine uh, Walker. Yes, yes telling, uh, saying how she had a her wig was uh, her James Brown wig yes. was crooked. She made fun of the native lady, call her Pocahontas. Yes, I mean all, all of these behaviors. Crazy, crazy Nancy. All of these behaviors, if it were in a school setting, we'd call it a bully. Yes. Uh, if it was on a playground, we'd call it a bully. But when it's in the White House, we're trying to find an excuse. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm very embarrassed. I mean, I am that international friends, and someone asked me, are you still in the U.S.? Are you going to come this way? And I said, well, I'm going to ride this one out and see what happens. But it, it is a, a disgrace. It's, you know, how do I stand up and say, America, uh, you know, America the Great, when other people are laughing at it, at the concept, when the, the British Prime Minister was talking about Bresic and someone said he was a mini Trump, he got on that in a hurry. I am not a, anyone's shadow. I, I thought nobody wants to be likened to this person who is uh, the commander in chief in the United States. Uh, it's painful. Uh, uh, the millenniums that I talked to refused to even give him his title of president. They call him number 44. Mm -hmm. They'll say 44 this and 44 that, and it took yes. me a while saying, what are you talking about? But that's what they're saying is the 44th president, and that's as much they will give him is the number. Uh, and I, it took me a while to catch on that that's what they were doing. And I, I'm just holding my breath to see what's next, because uh, if you came into my house and killed or got rid of something important to me, oh, then... Yeah. Um, you don't need the Koran or you don't need uh, the Old Testament. It's just saying, okay, this is human nature. You mm -hmm. have violated me. And, uh, you know, I pray that innocents are not punished for this travesty that has been done. Uh -huh. But when someone says retaliation, uh, as they say, a bullet has no eyes. That is absolutely correct. And this is a live segment. You can reach us at 337-366-8951. This is Vantage View. Uh, this is uh, one of our another one of our powerful show here uh, at AOC and com and completely streaming live. You could find us on Real Talk Media on YouTube, uh, Twitter Leroy Vallo, Instagram Cox Cable 15 L U S Fiber, Shahid Rashad streaming, uh, Ma Buck and Joe show streaming, and uh, uh, Dr. Bowles. Yes. What uh, what else? I mean we. Well, I mean, I wanted to certainly to, to hit on that, and, and I paused for a minute because I don't think we said Happy New Year to our listeners. Yes. Uh, I take great joy in looking forward to something new, and 2020, uh, I am sure, has a lot of people full of hope, and we want to be two people in agreement to reach out and say, um, this is going to be your best year ever, yes, and we yes. are looking forward to only the best for you, and we would love it for you to continue to follow us here on Vantage View. This to me is exciting to share information, both national, international, and for me, health-wise as well, and we'll talk more about it in our second hour. But yes. to talk more about our local stuff, I'm going to bring something from Alexandria, Louisiana, 
I picked up a town talk yesterday. That's the local newspaper. And on the front page, there was an article that made me pause. It, it was about an inmate in the uh, prison there under the care of Sheriff Hilton, whose lawyer filed a lawsuit for excessive force of some of the, uh, I guess you call them guards or deputies. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was a taser had been used multiple times on several of the inmates. And my understanding for a tasering is to disarm or disable someone without the intent to kill them. So you, if you have a drunken disorder, let's say a mental ill, or if there is a female officer and there's an overpowering suspect charging you, and you don't have to use your weapon because he has no weapon, but his body mass is sufficient that you could be compromised, then you tase them. You bring them down, you knock them down, and it will knock you down. You're talking, I think it's like 220 volts is equivalent to a, a heart-stopping jolt. And uh, they were using it in their facility as punitive. So they were repeatedly tasing uh, some of the inmates, and one of the young men's lawyer filed a lawsuit on behalf of the inmates, and the ruling, and this is a part I want you to listen to, the ruling was the inmate could not file a lawsuit against the sheriff department or the penal system why the 13th amendment declares him as property did you get me mm. property of the state property of the he state. is not a human being he is not a man he is the property please hear that if we don't get that out of our constitution folks this is 2020 and that just every time i hear it gives me a chill but the ruling was he could not file a lawsuit, but Sheriff Hilton, who's probably been in office for I don't know how many years, it's double digits, I'm sure, uh, stepped forward and said the deputies did not act within their training, and he took some disciplinary actions. I think some were uh, fired, and uh, there were some subsequent ar ar arrests, at least in the article. Uh, but as you know, once a, a law enforcement is arrested doesn't mean he's going to be indicted or tried. It's just sort of let's get that in the news that we did something. Mm -hmm. But the point that stuck for me is it was ruled that this person, person, <laughs> person, <laughs> who repeatedly was shocked for punishment could not file a lawsuit because he is the property of the state. Mm. And that is our 13th Amendment of the Constitution. If you don't know it, read it. It's 49 words. It says all people are free except those who have been indicted. They become the property mm. of the state. So I don't know if any other country uh, outwardly proposes in their very governing body that there can still be enslavement. Uh, so when we are outraged to talk about their slavery, enslaving young Nigerian girls, or the Arabs are still selling and buying slaves, we can't with a clean face. What was it if you do the biblical story? <laughs> Jesus said, let the man who has no sin cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. Well, we are quick to cast the stone. We're, we're quick to put embargoes and sanctions. But if you examine closely, we have as part of our governing law, the possibility and the execution, the reality of slavery in the United States. So that was something I wanted to address because when I read it, it just, it undid me for a minute because mm -hmm. he could not, the judge ruled that he could not have a lawsuit. So uh, I don't know what is more in your face to tell you, you're not a human being, mm -hmm. you're not a citizen, uh, yes. you have no rights, so if someone takes this cattle prod, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. and shock you multiple times uh, at the risk of your seizing or having a heart attack, um, you cannot cry out because you are the property of the state. So I want to bring that in. That just got me. Oh, that, yeah. That's local. That's Alexandria, that's Louisiana. Alexandria. <laughs> and then being the property, did that mean that you could do what you want at will? So if I need a lung or if I need to have something transplanted where well, the best place to go is where you have property in the prison. You know, who are the best people to experiment on than, the, than those that are incarcerated? Because particularly our young black uh, men and women that are incarcerated and serving lengthy time here in the state of Louisiana and, and elsewhere. And uh, we, we had the opportunity. Uh, yes. I was gonna uh, say, I call those the most vulnerable 
Uh, when you are now allowed to speak out, and I just gave you an example of mm -hmm. them saying you have no right to cry out. Um, when your voice is throttled, when your hands are cuffed and your ankles are shackled, uh, and you are told you are a number. Uh, oftentimes when you're talking about the imprisoned, they don't have a name, mm -hmm. they go by number. I think it's a six or seven digit number. And the whole thing is to reduce you, uh, your humanness. If you think about um, the Holocaust, as they call it, the Jewish Holocaust, they tattoo them with numbers. Well, what is that other than when you're in a penal system and they give you six numbers or seven numbers, and that's all you go by, they call out your number. Uh, that to me is a perpetuation of what was done during the Jewish Holocaust and Hitler time. Uh, we soften it because we don't brand it, but it's branded all over your paperwork. It's on a bracelet if you go to a medical mm -hmm. uh, facility, it's on uh, whatever labeling of you, um, you become a number. You are not human and they emphasize your lack of humanness by no longer giving you a name. And if you remember when that movie Roots came out, uh, the whole thing was they took away the identity of the person. Uh, they, they stripped whatever your African name was and gave you something. And uh, in uh, Kunta Kinte, mm -hmm. uh, the whole beating of him and the horribleness, trying to get him to, as they say, breaking him to accept what they want. If you think about it, every time there's a simulation, and you're military, so I, I know I'm talking. Think about when young men go into military. First thing they do is shave their heads. Mm -hmm. They want you to look alike. Mm -hmm. They strip what is your difference, if possible. They put you in a uniform. Why? You look alike. You now don't. If you may like silk shirts and I like T-shirts, but when I go in military, we look alike. Mm -hmm. I take military issue. My shoes are like your shoes. My clothes are like your clothes. Um, if my hair is kinky straight or whatever, I have no hair because I look like you. So if you think about any kind of domination, uh, whether it's for the purpose of unification for a military unit, um, you are stripping a person of their singularness. And a lot of times you come back from military, that's the problem. They can't come back into society because they expect you to flip a switch. Right. You're no longer part of a group. Now you're single again. You go back into your own world, separate identity, uh, and so forth. When we went to the trip uh, to Angola just before Christmas, I had never visited. Uh -huh. And I had heard about it. I knew the history. Uh, and it, I say Angola, this uh, Louisiana State Penitentiary. Right. It is the state uh, penitentiary. Everybody refers to it by the city, Angola. Uh, and, you know, I thought they called it Angola because there were so many black people incarcerated. Oh, okay, not that. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> someone's joke of uh, giving an African country name because yeah. of uh, incarceration. But our going there, and this is something you do quite frequently. This isn't. Mm -hmm. This was not a one shot for you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I admire that so much because going there, I had so many mixed feelings. One was joy to say I'm going and and interacting with people who can't come out with me. Yes. So my going in, I felt like this is wonderful, and the music was so wonderful. Oh yes, the yes. talented people there. Uh, there were several groups that performed. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we saw artifacts of the artists. They had these children toys that they, I don't know who commissions it, who sells it or what, yes. but some of the artistry, the carpentry, they had the rocking horse and they mm -hmm. had like a little boy's motorcycle mounted on the rocker. And I, I could just imagine a two to three year old having right. just a you know, ride of their life on this very beautifully uh, mm -hmm. carved uh, little toy. Yes. And then I had to pause and say, but look who did it. Mm -hmm. They are not even considered human. That's right. They are the property. Mm -hmm. And some of them that get that uh, their salary, some have, they get paid like uh, four cents an hour, two cents is taken out for tax. Uh, if the, um, a lot of the work that's done too, when it comes down to the carpentry, uh, they have that too at the Angola um, rodeo. And at the rodeo, they got to pay uh, a, a percentage for you to sell their items, and when you buy, you you know you you all of that is inclusive, you know. So you just have to think that I mean, to me, our 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 alleged uh, sins or whatever is never is we never can pay our debt back to society. We've got to always be branded, completely branded, and. 
it's like when you went when I went to the parole hearing, this man had done uh, 40 years on a rape charge. The parole board, all five of them, they asked him some question. What make you think that you are reformed? I mean, you have been rehabilitated. Well, I took every course that there is to take. You know, I took every course that there is. There is no more course I could take. Well, you know, all five of them I denied, denied, denied. And I'm like looking at this, I'm like saying, when is our debt ever paid back to society? Well, you see me shaking my head, Sister Khadija, because it should be the opposite. For over 400 years, we were the cattle, we were the workers, and we were not paid. So how do we even owe a debt? Mm -hmm. See, it, it's, that, it's almost a, a retaliatory situation. You have used me as your uh, free labor all these years. That's right. And when it was mandated that you can no longer do it, you created a new system. Mm -hmm. You're not calling it enslavement. You're calling it incarceration. And you're continuing your same things you always did. That's it's right. just called something else, sister. So when you say, when can we dig out? We've never been free. And mm -hmm. I say it again, never been free. You cannot have a people that for what, 10 generations uh, beholding to another people and say, okay, now you're free. Free to do what? Mm -hmm. I can't read. I can't drive a car. I have no businesses. Mm -hmm. I've lived here all my life. I've never traveled. What is freedom? So I have never heard, and I know I was looking at some of the books that you were showing me before we got on the air, mm -hmm. of how people keep retelling the story. And uh, one of my, um, I don't know, pet peeves, if you like, is the problem is so well studied, I'm ready for the solutions. Here's a shout out. My millenniums, my generation X, mm -hmm. my generation Zs, or whatever you are now, mm -hmm. you are the hope that mm -hmm. in the late 60s and 70s, uh, those of us who were saying, okay, this got to change, they came down on us. Mm -hmm. You had the FBI labeling. You had, like you just mentioned, my sister in Cuba, who now has, what, a million dollar yes. bounty on her head? Yeah. What was her crime? Enjoying. She wanted what I just described. Mm -hmm. She wanted equality. You know, people said, do you want justice? Absolutely not. I don't want justice. I want equity. And you say, mm -hmm. what do you mean by equity? If I gave you $10 20 years ago and you haven't paid me yet, guess what? You owe me $50 mm -hmm. because the 10 I gave you would be 50 if I used it for myself. But because you used it, if you're going to be equitable, if you're going to pay me back what mm -hmm. is due me, you will give me $50. So everybody in America talks capitalism. You hear how they paid the Japanese after they dropped the bomb. Yes. You, you hear how they did this restitution, that right. restitution. But for the last 50 years, they talk about reparation like we're asking for a handout. Yes, that's right. And I'm saying, no, 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 no. My and sister who has a bounty on her head was saying what I'm saying. She's saying, no, I demand uh, this is what I want. So they say, oh, well, let's, let's put a mark on her. Mm -hmm. Let's put her in prison. Yes. Let's shut her down. And the things that they done to her in yes. prison was just unbeknownst. But better yet, let's just go ahead and just look at, at, at Congress themselves. <laughs> uh, you know, when they, when they took and they went into the, uh, they, they stole millions of dollars, you know, uh, and the Congress itself say, well, you know, uh, we're going to do a forgiveness of loan. So that means all of these, all of these white male that stole, Amnesty, yes. you know, millions of dollars. You know, uh, George Bush's son was involved in that. You had Oliver North, Oliver North, who was a, a criminal, you know, <laughs> who uh, sold weapons to, to the Contra and everything. And he didn't even get a slap on the wrist. No. You know, look up Oliver North. I mean, he's alive and well yes. today, rich, rich, rich. But, you know, he helped the war. He helped start the war. But then that's forgiven. You know, so I... Well, I, what I, I think, and I hate to cut you because I know the emotion is there. When we say, well, what is the solution? I, I'm ready to start some advocates. And I'm calling out again to my young people, those I expect will live when I'm gone. I want you to you know, buy into the truth and start to look 
for what can be the solution. You're smarter than I am. You have technology I, I can't even think about how to manage. Mm -hmm. You don't have the same limitations. Your reach is so many times farther than mine. That's right. But my comment to you is this. When they start such as this conversation, look at all the travesties, look at all the hardships, let's start talking solutions. What is the first thing America can do for every slave descendant, every black American? I'm not saying Nigerian make American, Jamaican American. I'm talking about those that came during the Mayflower on a ship as an enslaved person shackled and for the next 200 years were enslaved and shackled, marched from the north down to New Orleans where they were sold into more servitude. No descendant of that person should have a student debt. If the, those of us who by whatever our parents' ability got us to get through the schools, going through the institutions that we were able to graduate, there should be no school debt. There are precedents for this. Dartmouth University is one of them. I understand that in New York City, they're looking at that. If you're saying, what is reparation? I don't want, uh, what, 40 acres and a mule? That makes no sense. Just like I said, I gave you $10 and now you owe me 50? Give me what I need today. I don't need acres and I don't need mules. And by the way, the Congress passed that decision. It was yeah. just never honored. Yeah, it was so, never honored. How, what is my solution? Pay off all student debts for anybody who is a descendant of the enslaved people from Africa. Zero debt, no student loans. I don't care if you finished school, didn't finish school. If you acquired an educational loan debt, it is now amnesty time. It is forgiven. In Illinois, they're now going and looking at the prisons for whatever uh, people incarcerated for marijuana of 30 grams or less, they're releasing them mm -hmm. because now marijuana is not a crime. It's That's just right. like you know during bootleg days when people were running alcohol. So I think that is what equity means. So no, I don't want justice. I don't mm -hmm. think we understand what justice is, not uh -huh. in America. Mm -hmm. I want equity. I want you to make it right. Make mm. it right. Mm -hmm. Don't make me equal. No, 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 no. Make it right. And one thing for me, what I would want, you know, the, the district attorney here uh, in Louisiana, uh, the judges, well, particularly the district attorney, they have so much power. When you look at the 16 JDC in uh, New Iberia, Louisiana, uh, we recently was fighting against them on behalf of the Honorable Judge Laurie Landry. They had over 40 cases of recusals for her and a whole, a whole trial out there and, you know, and uh, for that entire week, they even called in a special judge to come in and hear the cases. But when you're hearing the cases, you know, uh, it, it, it wasn't suffice, you know, so somehow uh, judge, uh, Honorable Judge Laurie Landry and uh, Bo Dewey, who is a, is a Bo Dewey, uh, what's his name, Phil Haney, um, I, now, now you see, now I need to be thinking about the, the other one, but Brother <laughs> Jay, you, you haven't called, but um, Robbie Vines, all of them together, you know, that orchestrated this e elaborate bull, bull crap. <laughs> You know, it backfired in their face because the community came out in support of Judge Wait, 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 wait. Sister, sister, you know what that was. It was a strong black female yes. that they were coming after. Yes. And those that were asking for her to be recused, her crime was being strictly business and no nonsense. That's right. Her crime was telling someone, I don't accept this. This isn't my quality that I, I, I accept. Mm -hmm. If you're coming before me, come prepared. That's right. And you had people saying, it hurt my feelings. Yeah, and, my feelings was hurting. And, and I fear fear. I yes. had fear. And she intimidated me. <laughs> intimidated me. She asked you for your paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> that's intimidation. But that's America. That's America. Look at, look at uh, you know, Emmett Till. What was his crime? He what was his crime? supposedly wolf whistled at a white woman. That's right. Who so later came out came and out said, and said he, he never he, did. He never did. Came out and said, and she, and I, I don't know if she at was. At 80-some years old, she admit 
that a 14 year old young man was dragged yes. out of his bed 2 30 in the morning beating beyond recognition thrown yes. into a river and then the state got shamed when the mother in philadelphia said return my son he said no mm -hmm. and she had to get a lawyer to have the body of her child brought back and brought that's why back. she did the open casting the open cast she says i want the world to see what you've done and you're trying to hide it that's you're right. telling me no because you know you beat him you mm -hmm. know you killed him you know no, you sunk him into a swamp and That's thought right. that was the end of it. That's so right. it's more of the same. It's more of the same. And then not only that, but Emmett Till, uh, father, who, who was a, a, a veteran, he who fought in the war, he was executed. He was executed by the group of people that he was fighting for. So you, you have that, tr that uh, process of uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm the, I'm a, have, I have power. I do with you as I want you on my property. He was killed in the war, you know, uh, just 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 uh, executed in the war, executed. But you see, this is what I mean. We can again, my millenniums, my generation X, Z's, yes. whatever. Please hear my cry. I'm saying you are the answer. Mm -hmm. You have the resource. You are the brilliant ones. Your opportunity is bigger than anyone else. Please. Uh, you know, get the solution in your heart. Hear the hear the problem. Don't get angry. Don't be sad. You know, see, I don't right. want to hear all that. No, no, no. Know your history, but you don't have to live in the past. Mm -hmm. You don't have to dwell on it. You don't have to come and pet me on the back and say, I'm so sorry to hear that's what you went through. Mm -hmm. uh, uh What you can do for me is say, here's how we can fight this. Uh, let's create our own internet. You know, that was something. I was talking to someone and they said, oh, I know what it was. I was listening to the uh, speech by President Putin. And mm -hmm. Putin, who's been in office now 20 years, was making a comment about one of the things for 2020, uh -huh. Russia's going to create its own internet. And I thought, wait a minute, I thought internet was a singular thing. Okay. And I stopped and said, you know what, that means I don't know enough. So somebody out there do, Mr. Millennia, uh, Miss Generation X as Z, if you understand what it means to create your own internet, why don't we have one? I want an internet that is started by some young black mind. And by the way, do you know that cell phone that you can't put down? It was a black female engineer who created the primary basis or processes by which the cell phone was developed. If you didn't know it, she's still alive. She was working in Atlanta, Georgia. She has close to 50 patents. So all we know is George Washington Carver because on our February Black Month, that's all we get is the same over and over. We need to find out who are our heroes today. Mm -hmm. A black female created the basis for GPS. You get lost and you grab your phone to find where you are. That's because of a black female engineer. Mm -hmm. So if that person can create that, then your moment is yet to come. Don't let anybody say what you can't do. Right. I listen to life coaches. Lisa Nichols is one of the people I listen to. And those of you who are under 40, she should be someone you go and listen to. She talks about how she was all the things that unfortunately sometimes they look down on. She was single. She had a child. She had no job. And she went to California. She was living in a small apartment. Uh, but she made a decision and she kept. She said she had to go to the same seminar 30 times. And you say, what? She said that she didn't get it the first time two, three, but she kept going. And when she got it, she is now a multimillionaire. Okay. She knew what it is she wanted to do, but she didn't know how to get there. And mm -hmm. when she sought out what it would take for her to learn it, she wasn't learning it. Mm -hmm. So she didn't say, oh, I can't learn that. I, she kept going back and she kept going back until it started to click. She heard it and this time she learned more than the last mm -hmm. time. When she said that, I said, yes, 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 and yeah. And that's what she'll say, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And I understand that mantra for her. Okay. Anybody who will repeat something in double digits, they're serious. Mm -hmm. So those of you out here who don't get it in the first five minutes or in the first year and yeah. walk away, it wasn't for you. Yes. Yes, yes. It wasn't for yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, and then and then also when you look when you look at uh, Queen Mother Moore, Queen Mother Moore is right here from yes. New Iberia, Louisiana. I'll get to the call and go back on Queen Mother Moore caller. Do you have a question or a comment? Yes, good evening, Mr. Strong. <laughs> hey, uh, good evening day. to Dr. Bowles. Good, Long good time. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Not having you on back here in the Lafayette <laughs> area. And, and also, salute to you, Sister Khadija, and to Brother Shahid, the director, for putting on an excellent show. 
Listen, Dr. Bowles, I want to harken back, if you don't mind, and give, give my little short comment, and maybe you might want to jump back in. Okay. I don't want to rehash the same thing you guys opened up the show with, but this is a prominent issue uh, what's going on with uh, in the country <laughs> with this person in the White House, and I'm one who don't call him my president. I've never, matter of fact, I never did call anyone my president because, you know, I, 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 from that old adage of, uh, you know, uh, I was... I came into existence uh, not by accident, by faith, and I'm and I'm a, and no no one man could make me believe in a system, no matter <laughs> what, where I live or where I'm from. Listen, Dr. Bush, you yes. talked about these people, uh, you know, uh, in the White House who are in the, the enablers. Is 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 this something different about this uh, this person in the White House and his and his enablers? It's more like a slow death march to the gas chambers on life, in a sense, Dr. Bowles, and we know what that was about in Hitler's Germany and, and Hitler's era. But people are not really understanding what this person has done. Everything he does has an effect, cause and effect. And again, I say elections have consequences in a sense if we don't participate. Uh, just the other day when this issue about the, the threat of war came out, Dr. Bowles, the gas prices shot up instantly. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, Iran is one of the sites of oil, and if they yeah. want to retaliate by right. cutting right. oil supply off, yeah. then we are hurt. Going back, <laughs> going back to when we talk about all the things that his enablers are doing, everybody wants to walk like Trump, talk like Trump, act mm -hmm. like Trump, and it has a trickle-down effect. And it's not him that's in power. It's those enablers. It's the Mitch McConnell, the Lindsey Graham. These people, it's like they don't give a damn. Okay, and you know, you know what I did? For black folks who accept this thing, uh, I say shame on you because we are in a slow march to the gas chamber. When you as a person call yourself the president who's going to talk down to grown NFL players who make millions of dollars, probably they got enough cumulative money more than probably he, he ever made because uh, he's not a real billionaire, he's a fake billionaire. When you would talk down to them, Sister Khadija, no disrespect, and call them sons of bitches, and we can say it on AOC, you're talking about their mother. Yeah. And for no, nobody to be outraged about that, and no black person to be really, really outraged for the fact that this person is in the White House, well, it's, it's a sad day. So we're going to accept our slow march to the gas chambers if we don't try to stand up as black folks and, and, and conscious and progressive people and, and get this person out of the White House, because we only... We on a slow death march in the state of Louisiana. Look at the last election, Dr. Bowles. He Bowles came and Rispone. boasted up Responi. <laughs> and Responi came in really close. Uh, yeah. Josh Guillory, who's, who basically is a, a protege of Rudy Giuliani. Yes. Hateful, evil people mm -hmm. who are running things now in, in politics in the state of Louisiana. And, and I'm going to jump off the phone. I know I say it a lot. <laughs> I been on the panel with you no, guys. no, no, don't leave yet because I want to address please. a couple of things and I want us to go back and forth a little please. bit. Uh, I actually asked a person about Trump saying, what is it? What, what is it that protects him? And they said, uh, the rich are making a lot of money no, uh, no. under Trump. Wait, 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 wait. Economically savvy. What it is, wait, it's wait, no, 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 no. It's not Trump himself. It's his racism. <laughs> But but you gotta understand the behind the scenes. Let's go to Wizard of Oz for a moment. You remember how all the lightning and thunder, they're going to see the wizard. And when the dog pulls the curtain back, it's just a man pulling on some strings that got some smoke coming out. Well, Trump is a man behind the curtain pulling on some strings. But there are people who because of the um, aggressive, uh, foolhardy stuff, uh, Chinese sanctions, Iranian sanctions, they are making money. They're making yeah. money because when China didn't send it over here, they sell their product. When they, so there are people, did you know that Nancy Pelosi is worth $20 million? So we gotta look at the people in charge. Anybody who got money is gonna be protective of somebody who got money. Right. When well, I was in hearing- this, In this middle class society- Yes, of, yes, yes, we, yes, yes. We, have, we have it better. They're not. The people at the top want to make yes, money. Remember, yes, I always say yes. America is just one big giant pyramid yes, scheme. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, uh, listen, one other thing is is how, uh, if you look at what happened with, with, the, uh, with the killing of that, that general, America yes. is engaging in assassination yes. under, his, under him more prominent. They were doing it back with yes. other administration crew, but there's, yeah. there's, there's no shame. 
look at the, the journalist Khashoggi. I'm pretty sure yes. that the, the Trump administration had a lot. Yes, because we weren't outraged and we sat on it for a year or so. Yes. See, this yes. is a whole well, thing. Thank you guys so much, and I'm sorry for <laughs> No, you got me got, ignited now. I well, know we have to slow down. Well, well we, we sure do. So, uh, <laughs> we have, we're going to talk about this. I'm going to drink my water. Thank you so much. Okay, okay, we have a few books that we want you to read this coming year. Uh, we only have like four minutes left. And I'll show this again at the end of the I second read, hour. So I can't read books. Oh! Ah! <laughs> Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Oh, you didn't say the okay. title. Okay. This is Salute Reaction by Velva Bowles, and I will talk a little bit more about this during our second hour because our second hour has to do with health. And this book is about health, and it has a large black um, descendant history uh, in the medical world, how we've been used and abused by the American industry and how the pharmaceutical company has gone into trillions, I didn't say billions, I didn't say millions, trillions of dollars, and much of it is on the backs of black people. So we will talk about that, but if you want to read about it more, I published this book, I think it's 2015, this is a second edition. And I think that reading it, if you had any questions, I'll be glad to answer. So I'll give you more information during the second hour. Okay. And this book is Our Story, The Original Holocaust, right here by Wes W.C. Johnson, The Undisputed Ancestral Truth, Knowledge Kept Secret for 6,000 Years Now Comes to Light. And uh, W.C. Johnson, he's, he stays right here in New, or in New Orleans. We have... Um, Black I Am, yes. Cajun and Creole I'm Not, and that's my brother Takuna Milana El Shabazz, and he's right here in Lafayette, and he, he breaks it down, the difference why Cajun is just ain't us. You also have uh, an unlikely warrior, Herman Ferguson, Evolution of a Black Nationalist Revolution by Yana Ferguson and Herman Ferguson, husband and wife team. We also have 40 Acres, uh, and that's by Dwayne Alexander, and he goes into talking about how these uh, athletes, these these athletes, and uh, reparation, you know, and, and what we could do if we work together. You also have the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks. Henrietta oh, yes. Lacks. She, we need to know that. That definitely every black female needs to know this. Yes, and they they took doctors took her sales without asking, and those sales never died. They are worth trillions of dollars. Johns Hopkins, uh, all across Sweden and, and uh, Germany. If you study anything as a graduate student that has to do with cancer, you're using HeLa cells. You're using HeLa cells. That's right. And uh, th this, the, the last book we have, The New Jim Crow. Uh, oh, which I love is that. By uh, Michelle, Michelle Alexander. Alexander. And she talked about mass incarceration in the age of colorblindness. And uh, she was here in New Orleans uh, several times because remember, Louisiana uh, had the highest incarceration rate in the world. And I think that we- What was so special about Michelle, just to throw it out, she used to be a district attorney in California. Mm -hmm. And she admitted that when she was prosecuting black people, she never believed when they would say, this deputy planted these drugs in my car. They planted, and then it became a reality where she saw it for herself. Mm -hmm. And she admitted in one of her presentations in Atlanta, how hurt, how pained she was to have been in a position where she could have mediated on behalf of these black men, but thought the establishment was the real deal. So uh, it is a, a major thing, in my opinion, for someone to admit an error and to make a statement so firmly and then turn around and tell us through her information. See, Adia is a powerful figure. Yes, so she indeed. speaks from a position of power and knowledge. So it is worth reading Michelle Alexander or go on YouTube and listen to some of her presentations. Yes, and we have about less than a, uh, less than a minute. We have uh, part two of Vantage View, so please <laughs> don't go nowhere. We'll be right back with all this powerful uh, information. So until we do, I just want to go back to what Brother Jay was saying okay. on this question. Um, when you see, they say they're black, white, and then there's Latinos, but there's also another race, and it is the rich. When you get above a certain dollar amount, the color disappears, it becomes green. And uh, what I have found in the very uh, few times I've brushed shouldered with people with a lot of money, people with money don't handle money. People with money wire, 
uh, conversation, handshake. Uh, I happened to have been at a hotel, the young lady whose father was very well to do, and we walked through the lobby, and if we admired something, it showed up in our room. And I would say, oh my goodness, Beth. Then she said, oh, they know who my father is. Oh. Yes, okay, indeed. Okay. They know who my father is. And that was my first kind of like, huh, what? Or we'd sit by the pool and they'd come and offer us a drink, and you're talking $14 drink. Oh. And I would say, I don't have any money because we're in swimsuits. And she'd look at me and smile and say, well, they know who my father is. They know who my they father know is. They know who my father is. Well, stay tuned for part two. <laughs> uh, part two will be in about three minutes and everything. Uh, and we enjoy this is a live segment. Yes, indeed. You can reach us at 337 366 one. And, and this is Vantage View. Do call us.